right, checking in again, guys. So uh, here in about an hour, I'm gonna be at a press conference that is going to be led by formerly E presenter Saunders Carmichael Brown. He's gonna be speaking with husband and wife explorers, Chris and Julie Ramsey, to hear how they're progressing on their epic 27,000 kilometer journey, um, traveling from the magnetic North Pole in the frozen Arctic Ocean to the South Pole in Antarctica in an all electric Nissan Aria. So on the nine month expedition through the Americas, they'll showcase the capability and excitement of EVs and shine light on bold initiatives and fascinating communities that are really focused on harnessing renewable energy. Um, I'm really excited about this. I think it's really cool. I'll show you guys the car. We'll see if we can get some details, uh, but I'll see you in a little bit. For the last 10 years, myself and Julie have been facing private elementary vehicles for a lift of people owners. Um, and I discovered an electric vehicle, like I say, nearly 10 years ago, this time we took on a man road trip around the UK, as you understand, just the kid through in with of the car, charging with the structure, answer all those questions. Um, from there, I little, just got into time with me, I went out and bought one leaf, and then just started doing all these crazy adventures. And then we decided in 2017 to drive uh, Nissan Leaf from the Kimberley Racing Circuit in London to Ulan India in Southern Siberia and then making it with the Mongol Railway. So it's 10,000 miles in across in 56 days. And then from there, we just showcased just how far you can drive an EV, charging with the structure you can do, right? Charging with the structure. And then when we finished, I was looking at what we can do next. And I came up with this idea that you very kind of let me get on with it. So, I mean, from Paul to Paul, in a nutshell, is is to drive from the, uh, the 1823 magnetic North Pole location up in the Canadian Arctic, all the way through the Americas, 17,000 miles, 14 countries, all the way to the geographical South Pole in Antarctica. In um, ultimately, the expedition is not a race. We follow a mindful journey of hope and discovery. Hope that there are solutions out there to be kinder to our world by choosing sustainable transportation and uh, discovery because we're discovering new things every day. We're meeting so many people every day. The car is attracting us to so many people every day. We get to share our story. We get to learn from them. And it's just such a unique way to um, promote EV and sustainable travel. So, so the, the multiple expedition official vehicle will be the, the Nissan Aria, but it couldn't just be an Aria off the shelf. You had to do some, some interesting tweets to us though. Yeah, so we, obviously we're doing this kind of expedition. You've got to engage with the experts. I know a lot about electrification, I'm about pushing EVs to their absolute limits, but I don't know, we don't know anything about going into the poles. We've never done a poll exhibition before in our life. So we engage with a company called Arctic Trunks. People might know them from BBC documentaries from Top View where they, they're creating vehicles for them. And they gave them the area and they converted it to media or exhibition ready. And that's why when I joke, the, the 39 inch tires is the big thing that everybody really looks at. And um, so, what they've had to do is take that vehicle and keep it to a certain extent as standard as possible. We want to keep the ethos of the car. We want to make sure that people can look at this exhibition and say, that Nissan Aria, as a factory car with big 39 inch tires, has literally driven pole to pole. So when people look at the car, there is no suspension rates, there's no battery change, there's no drivetrain changes. It is a factory Aria, and all the engineering work that Martin Trucks have done, incredible engineering work is to make Reese got the, the wheel arches to make those 39 inch tires fit the car. And then there's a few other things that you maybe want to go through those two. What formula are you doing? I mean, what I'm saying is I've been a fan of Formula E since seen one day one. And what you guys do is you're, you're pioneering site people. And that's exactly what we're trying to do with this exhibition. And the area definitely excites me with the amount of comments we get. Emails coming through, messages on Instagram, and people say, Wow, I've seen this car, I've seen what you're doing, I'm so inspired, you're inspiring others, you're inspiring the family. I'm now not thinking that an EV is incapable, I'm, you made me think an EV should be next to me. And that's all we hope to do is just inspire people to think differently about EVs and go, EVs are cool, EVs are exciting, and I think every probably the one that's buying thinks the area is cool. 
But just to wrap up I mean, to, and to summarise, the journey you've had so far has already been incredible. You know, the challenges you've had to overcome to get where you are now, being the northwest of the US. Talk us through what's to come now with the rest of this journey. So from here, after Poland, the plan is to go and enjoy the west coast, um, California. Um, I have a little bit of time out, which would be really nice. Um, and then we make our way across to Mexico. Um, and then from Mexico, we're into Central America. And then we go down the west coast of South America. All the way to, hopefully down to Ushuaia. Maybe just Punta Arenas, but maybe Ushuaia. Um, southern tip. And then from there, we, uh, we go into Antarctica. The east that is Antarctica, which is going to have its, its challenges completely different to the Arctic. And on a timeline, what, where are you aiming, or what time of the year are you aiming to get to Antarctica? So, you know, when we get to Punta Arenas, it's going to be like the start of November. So we have to make sure we cover up a few, few things, because obviously it's, it's a very pristine environment. Um, we want to make sure we're not taking anything there that shouldn't be there, so the main glass we can be cleaned. It's then flowing into Antarctica, because we are literally quite in the middle of a huge continent um, at the Union Glacier base. Um, and then we drive 650 miles to the geographical South Pole. Quick little celebration model. And then um, literally turn around and drive 650 miles back to be extracted. So we're probably not going to be home until, December, until January 2024. You've been to Antarctica, right? So you know how harsh place it is. So uh, maybe you can give us some tips on that. <laughs> well, I'll certainly be watching every single moment because this is a fascinating thing you're doing. I think anybody that not, doesn't just have an interest in electric cars, but an interest in adventure and travel and culture, uh, we want to see what you guys get up to. So we wish you the best of luck. And I implore everybody to check out and uh, follow these guys on social media and keep up to date with the journey. It's going to be incredible. Great. Well, uh, Kevin with Green Cars here. Kevin. Yes. Nice to meet you, Kevin. And uh, I'm here with Julie and Chris uh, yeah. from the Nissan Pole to Pole, and we're here at the Formula E race today. And uh, just want to ask these two a, a couple of quick questions because. Uh, out of anybody who's experienced range anxiety, I'm sure that it's uh, you, you've really experienced it uh, in a pretty hardcore way um, in, a, in an adventure from the top of the world to the bottom of the world. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, every so, drive we do, we have to calculate the distance, don't we? So yeah. from point A to point B, there's a lot of planning. And then there's, um, there's been times where we've gone down to very, very little battery and very, very little range. Um, you just have to manage it and you those are tense moments, aren't they? But uh, maybe it's down to bad planning in the first instance. If you plan, you shouldn't be in that position. But I think driving an EV is no different than filling up your fuel in a petrol um, or a gas car, right? You have Absolutely. to plan yourself. So, but, um, but yeah, so far we haven't gone to zero yet. Yeah, no, and, and to put it in perspective, we're driving from the 1823 Magnetic North Pole location all the way through the Americas, 17,000 miles, 14 countries, between geographical South Poles, you know, Antarctica. So we've got a lot of planning to do on charging stops. And yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been some, even as much as you plan, or I, I would give advice to people is when you do plan, plan stops where there is multiple chargers, in case you do have maybe a, a teething problem with the charger and you've always got backups. But yeah, planning, and then it becomes second nature after a while. We did London to Mongolia. Oh. 10,000 miles in a, in a Nissan Leaf, 30 kilowatt Nissan Leaf back in 2017. Um, so that proves that range anxiety <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is, um, is, is, is an adventure. We are taking things to the extreme. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> absolute extreme. We're doing things to the car that we shouldn't be doing to the car. So um, for normal day-to-day -day life, there shouldn't be need for any range anxiety. You've got your charger at home. You've got your charger my hats at work, you've got public. So if you just plan properly, you shouldn't have that. Sh that shouldn't be a problem when it comes to yeah. driving. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so, like, I guess on your, your journey thus far, I mean, have, have there been times where you're you're very low? You don't know if it's like, you know, you're going to get that energy where it's going to come from. Like, yeah. what, what do you how do you manage that Like I mean, on, on your scale? You know, uh, Northern Canada is probably one of the yeah. first times to so really North Canada up in full Providence, oh, yeah. in the Yellowknife area. There was areas where there was like it was a 200 mile stretch between, between chargers, well, between towns, and there's nothing in between. And there are no chargers at the next stop. So we got down there with about 4%. We, that's where we're really pushing the limit in the car. That's when the heating gets switched off. Because, uh, and it's what, minus 25? Yeah. And the heating's off because we're trying to manage the battery. And every half a percent counts. Yeah. And that's why we say we're pushing it to the extreme. Yeah. Because everyone's going to say every half a percent really counts for us. Yeah. So we're there and we just literally have to go and just knock on doors and ask 
people if they've got a flood that we can And we do not know if we were going to meet. We do not know who's behind that door, what charging. Just knocking, like... Literally knocking hey. and saying... But the good thing is they are so helpful, aren't they? So, so kind. And they will go above and beyond to try and help us get a charge. And we experienced that in Canada um, a couple of times. And no doubt we'll experience it more on the rest of the journey. And that's what makes the adventure. And that's what where the the kindness and the the spark comes when it, on this easy journey because if we just went through public all the time then we wouldn't engage so much with the locals so in some respects it's good to have these moments although sometimes you're a bit nervous but I think we're experienced now to know that somebody will help us yeah. we have faith in humanity that yes. and, uh, <laughs> it's still there and I guess bear in mind we're going off the beaten track oh so we're not yeah, I mean, for, for, you know 99% of the population out there they're going to be have a charging infrastructure to yeah. support them yeah, we are the exception to the rules. We always say to people, take what we're doing to a certain extent with a pinch of salt, because we are the exception. Yeah. We're not the norm in the EV world. We are just showing the true capabilities of the cars and showing that you can still run long distances, there's chargers out there. And even when you don't have chargers, all you need is electricity, which is basically what you have at home, and that's how you charge your car. Yeah. Amazing. I, I would say if, if you guys can do this, anybody can do it. I, I mean, really think that's the message. We are just, like, uh, very normal yeah. husband and wife team from Aberdeen you know we're not ex-rally drivers we don't you know we're no we're not military base we are just a uh, very normal couple yeah. you know and a married couple when you offer the word because we yeah how we do these adventures together people do get a little bit and so I think how do you do it but I you know. think that's the biggest challenge yeah. how do we stay married yeah right <laughs> in this uh, crazy adventure and we can find in like this small space as well and, um, there are videos that we can show people online, and there's videos we can't one. show. Yeah. You, you don't want to hear some of the conversations we have, <laughs> but um, but yeah, we, we laugh about it. And I say it's like this expedition was like your worst nightmare, but also your best dream because you get moments where it's just so low, and you think, What am I doing here? Why am I doing this? And other moments where you think, Oh my goodness, this means this is everything. I, I can see why I'm doing this. And it's just so magical, my special nuggets at the moment. So, the motions are high and yeah. low, but I think for anyone going on an adventure, that, that's why people love it, you know? So, um, we also say to people, is like, if you're thinking of going EV, yeah. well, you're kind of maybe a little bit skeptical. So it's still, we meet people that are still skeptical about going EV. Yeah. We find that a lot of people have multiple cars in the house. We did. So change one car to an EV. Yeah. yeah. Learn to live with it. And then like us, you'll find that your petrol car, or your diesel car just sits on the drive more often than not. And you think, I'm going to have to sell that and get another EV. Pretty much and I feel well. like we're at a point yeah. in time now where most manufacturers has an option for EV and they're at that range where it covers most people's daily commutes, you know. So um, we're at that point where I think it's like if you're a two-car family, like I say, you can switch one out, yeah. do it in a transition, do it slowly, and then you'll surprise yourself to think, you know, why didn't I do it sooner type thing. That's how we got into this. And if you think the car behind us, unmodified, I will say, yeah. um, has over 300 miles of range. And you know, that's more than enough. Ninety yeah. percent of people's journeys, ninety-five percent of people's journeys, three hundred miles is It's a beautiful car to drive, and um, the fact that you're driving around with zero tailpipe emissions, and it's just something nice about knowing that you're not in the city or the town that you live in as well. And, you know, you, there's so many advantages yeah. to EVs. I could rattle them all, which is not there, it's so quiet fun. inside. Yeah, that was what really stood out to me on my trip up here. Was uh, it yeah, is just did, so did, nice. Did it did, yeah, yeah, and I had to stop once and then twice to charge, but it wasn't bad at all. I mean, yeah. I, it was five minutes on a charger and I was back up to 80% and, and it, on my way. And it gives you yeah. that break as well, whether it's stretch oh. your legs, comfort break, a cup of coffee, you know, so even though we're going on the road relentlessly, it's forcing us to stop and give us that break, which is not a bad thing. So it's actually safe driving too. It's more relaxing driving. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very therapeutic thing. Yeah.